Well, that may be an interesting question. A more useful question is, if a tree falls in the stream, does it create fish habitat? In the Yankee Fork, the answer is a definite yes. Large wood in the Yankee Fork provides resting and security cover for native fish species, including Chinook salmon and steelhead, cutthroat, and bull trout. It helps retain small woody debris, which provides winter habitat for juvenile salmonids. It also creates velocity breaks that help sort substrate and create spawning habitat. Mining, which began in the Yankee Fork in the 1870s, has directly affected Yankee Fork streams. However, less noticeable indirect impacts remain from timber harvest associated with mining. Miners who flocked to the Yankee Fork towns of Bonanza and Custer needed houses and heat, and the local forest provided those needs. In 1880, there were five sawmills in the Yankee Fork with a combined capacity of 40,000 board feet of lumber per day. In 1881, an ore mill was constructed, which used 300 cords of wood per month to fire at steam power. By 1904, the local newspaper reported that the hills for miles around Custer were denuded of trees. The trees currently present along the Yankee Fork might lead one to believe that the area has fully recovered from timber harvest impacts. However, Forest Service data comparing the Yankee Fork with similar areas where timber harvest did not occur show that the amount of large wood in the Yankee Fork stream channel is still only 24 to 57 percent of natural levels. During 2014 and 2015, resource managers and conservation interests cooperated to implement a project aimed at increasing large wood loading in the Yankee Fork to natural levels. The project was implemented within the area primarily affected by timber harvest between Jordan Creek and Eight Mile Creek and within the range of steelhead and Chinook salmon. The project involved adding 728 pieces of large wood to the 7.4 miles of stream. A key factor in this project was to place the wood in the stream to simulate the way wood is naturally recruited to the stream, including trees falling in from beside the stream, avalanches, and debris flows. We're standing here in one of the three debris flows that were part of this project. Debris flows are typically triggered by high intensity precipitation events and bring large amounts of wood and rock into a small section of stream. We mimicked a debris flow by selecting a location where it likely would have occurred naturally and then placed large amounts of rock and wood into the stream. One of the large wood recruitment processes that we wanted to mimic on this project was avalanches. Avalanches typically bring large amounts of wood into small sections of the river. This project included three simulated avalanches. wood moves into the Yankee Fork is through what we call streamside recruitment. This occurs when trees growing along the stream bank fall into the river. This project involved placing a large number of trees in the stream in a manner that mimics streamside recruitment. Track hoe was used to put in trees with root wads attached, as root wads are an important habitat creating component and have a large influence on tree movement within the river.
trees were also placed with a helicopter in areas where access was difficult or where it was important to avoid removing trees that would later naturally fall into the stream. Above that rock there? Yeah. yeah. And we got uh, flagging on a rock it's about 20 feet up from the last one. They want to keep it above that rock. Okay, copy that. Above the rock. Okay, we're on the lower reach of the Yankee Fork below Custer. Um, this is a tree that was put in uh, last week uh, by our project. And there's uh, a lot of little fish that have kind of keyed in on the slow water uh, habitat created by the tree as well as the cover. Both juvenile and adult fish quickly began using the newly placed logs. And as the legendary Jerry Myers has said, Proof's in the pudding. Fish like it. <laughs>